You know, green is great for trees and grass, not so much for your pool. Hi, and welcome to Leslie's Pool Care Tips. I'm Rick with today's tip on how to remove and prevent algae. There are three types of algae common in pools. There's green, yellow or mustard, and black. Green and yellow or mustard algae is commonly mistaken for dirt or sand at the bottom of the pool, but can also grow on your pool walls. If you've got algae, quick action is necessary to remove it. Today, we're gonna to focus on removing green and yellow algae. Here are the supplies you're going to need. You're gonna need a water test kit or test strips, green to clean, a chlorine-based shock, water clarifier, a phosphate reducer, pool brush, and of course, algae prevention products. First things first, before you start adding any chemical to your pool, you wanna make sure that you have a clean filter. So if you have a DE filter or a sand filter, this is when you wanna go ahead and backwash the system. Now, if you have a cartridge filter, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead, disassemble it, and clean those cartridges really well. If you want more information and details about how to clean a cartridge filter, we'll leave a link below with more instructions. Great, now that you've got your cartridge filter, sand filter, or DE filter all cleaned up, it's time to make sure that your equipment is running continuously before adding any chemical to the water. So, some of you may have automation, some of you may have an analog timer. An analog timer looks something such as this. Now, if you've got automation, you're gonna to need to refer to your manufacturer's directions on how to get it set up to run continuously. But again, this is critical. Now, if you have an analog timer such as this, you've got one tripper that tells the pool when to turn on and another one that tells it when to turn off. So you want it to run continuously. In order to do that, you're just gonna loosen the thumb screw and you're gonna remove the tripper from the yellow dial. Then you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna flip the timer on. Now it's time to make sure that your water is balanced. So you wanna have a water test completed. You can do that at one of our Leslie stores or you can do it at home with your test kit. Now, as you're testing the water, there's one really important piece that you need to remember when using the chemicals we're gonna show you today, and that's your pH. So all the water needs to be balanced. However, the pH actually needs to be 7.8 or higher. So if your pH is in perfect range from where you usually have it or low, you need to go ahead and adjust it so that it's 7.8 or higher. That's really important because the chemicals we're gonna to use today will actually decrease your pH. So you're gonna have a starting point where it's a little bit higher, this way it doesn't get completely out of bounds. Now it's time to brush the pool. If you wanna get back into that pool really quick or you want it to look clean and clear as quick as possible, then brushing is gonna help expedite the process. So go ahead and make sure to brush the entire perimeter of the pool. Now that you're done brushing the pool, it's time to start adding the chemicals. The first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna add green to clean. This is specifically for use, whether your pool is green, yellow, or as I said before, commonly referred to as mustard allergy. Now, before I tell you how to use this, I do want you to take note at the top. It's really important that you do not mix this product in a bucket or in a pail. This needs to be added directly to your pool. And for that matter, go ahead and make sure you read the instructions on all the labels of the products before putting them in the pool for safe measure. Okay, so green to clean, you're gonna use two pounds of this if you have 15,000 gallons. And they sell a two pound container as well as a four pound container. So again, if you're 15,000 gallons, you're gonna use two pounds. And you're just gonna go ahead and broadcast this around the entire perimeter of the pool. You can concentrate a little bit more of it in the deep end where there's always a lot more water or in some of those problem areas where maybe there's a little bit more allergy. So you add the green to clean and you're gonna wait five minutes then you're gonna add two bags of shock. 
Now after adding your two bags of shock, you may see the water bubble or foam and turn white. Hey, that's a chemical reaction and it's perfectly fine, so don't panic. Now if you don't see it, that's okay as well. Depending on the severity of the algae is gonna, gonna determine the reaction that you see in the water. Then you're gonna wait 12 hours. After 12 hours, you're gonna add two more bags of chlorine. Then you're gonna wanna wait another 12 hours and add your last two bags of shock. That's why you've used six in total. Now your pool should look significantly better than when you first started. And if it's not looking clear, it's likely looking cloudy, it's time to go ahead and get rid of that cloudiness, which is dead algae. So to remove that dead algae, you want to use not just a regular clarifier, but something specifically designed to remove dead algae like clear -Aid. So clear -Aid not only has a clarifier built into it, but it has enzymes and those enzymes break down the waste and the oils and organics that are in there to help get that pool back to clear quickly. Before you move on to the next step, you need to go back over to your equipment. After you've gotten rid of the algae, you got rid of the cloudiness, which is the dead algae that's in there, you need to clean your filters. And you're ready to move on to the next step. That's making sure you put your timer back on so it's set up to operate at its normal schedule. So if you've got automation, refer to your manufacturer's manual to see what steps you need to take If you wanna make sure you don't continue to get algae, you need to make sure to test for something really important. That's phosphates. Phosphates are actually the food source for algae. And if you've had algae before and you've gotten rid of it, and then it comes back a few days later, a week later, or really soon, it's because you didn't get rid of the root cause, which are phosphates. So after your pool is looking great, you've cleaned your filter, make sure to test for those phosphates. If your phosphates, are higher than 100 part per billion, you need to make sure to use a phosphate remover. That's gonna make sure you remove the food source from your pool so that you're less likely to get that algae. Okay, so to make sure you don't get algae again, here are some great preventative maintenance tips. First, test your water weekly. Second, shock your water weekly. And lastly, use a phosphate reducer to maintain your phosphate levels below 100 part per billion. To keep it really simple, we've got a great guide that's either on our app or in the link below that you can use. And it's gonna walk you through the step-by-step -step instructions that we went through today. And it's got a little more detail on there for you as well. Removing algae is a costly and time-consuming process. So keeping your water balanced and taking steps to prevent algae pays off big time. If you need more help testing your water or information about algae prevention and removal, check out our Leslie's blog or stop into one of our stores. We're here to make pool care easy so you can spend more time enjoying your pool. Thanks for joining me for Leslie's Pool Care Tips.